NRG Stadium in Cleveland, Ohio. It's a special prime time edition of the NFL on EA Sports. We'll see Baker Mayfield and the Cleveland Browns taking on Lamar Jackson and the Baltimore Ravens. Well, no precipitation in the forecast, but we do have a cold night in store at First Energy Stadium on the southern bank of Lake Erie. This was the scene a few minutes ago. The dog pound in full roar as their Browns emerge from their tunnel. And they're ready to go as they get set to match up with the Baltimore Ravens. The Browns kicker, Cody Parkey, all set and off we go from First Energy Stadium. That'll be taken about a yard deep. And he'll be stopped right around where he would have been had he gone down to a knee, maybe a yard shy of there at the 24. The reigning league MVP, Lamar Jackson, trotting onto the field and leading the way now in his third season in the National Football League as this Baltimore offense gets set to go. And to me, he's one of the two most difficult guys in the league to game plan for in the NFL, and I add Patrick Mahomes in that category. But just about every team we talk to getting ready for Lamar Jackson says the exact same thing. We've got to slow him down running the football, yet no one's been able to really do it consistently. Now, the most impressive thing about his game to me, how he's developed as both a passer and a leader. His team believes in him. Give him three there on the first play of the game, and it's second down. Dobbins running out of the gun. He'll have a first down past the 40 as he'll get this one up to the 44-yard line. It's a pickup of 17 and a first down. From the gun, it's Jackson. Trying for Brown, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Terrence Mitchell. And he takes this one back into the end zone, and the Browns' defense has a touchdown. It goes without saying, but I'm going to say it anyway. That's a ball he would like to have back, and it lands right in the lap of the defender from there. He doesn't have very far to go before he gets to the end zone, and he got there in a hurry. Parkey is on now for the point after. It's up and through to make it 7-0 Browns. So the defense creating some points, not only getting the interception, but then returning it to the end zone for the pick six. So they'll get another shot on offense following that pick six, and now the kick is away. Fielded a couple yards into the end zone. And he'll be stopped right around where he would have been had he gone down to a knee, maybe a yard shy of there at the 24. The Raven offense set at the line for this next drive. They'll start on the ground with Dobbins. Yeah, they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. This drive starting off on the right foot, 18 yards. One play has him up past the 40 already, and another first and 10. Right back to Dobbins on first. And he'll take this for about four up to the 46-yard line. The run got four. Now they deal with a second and six. From the gun, Jackson. That's caught by the former Sooner, Mark Andrews. Well, they're unable to convert that into much, but it's never a bad idea to try to get the ball into a tight end of his caliber's hands and see what kind of disruption he can cause. They'll try to run for it with Dobbins. And able to pick up the first across midfield to the 47. 
They'll get a couple yards on that one, and it'll give them a fresh set of downs. And the former Heisman winner, this is Mark Ingram. And he is met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. Call it no gain on the play, and it'll be second down. So after the run for no gain, here's second and ten. Well done to sniff that out defensively. He had it diagnosed pretty quickly. I love that description because diagnosed is perfect on that. Read his keys, made the play, and he couldn't even get going moving the football. That's me, baby. Turn it up. Turn it up. You can do better than that. After one, seven nothing on EA Sports. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. Jackson on the give to Dallas. And he stopped immediately there. Officially no gain on the play and it's second down. Nice job there defensively to clamp down because really they've been on their heels this drive. Agreed, and they really needed that one for confidence, just to feel a little bit better. But I don't know if I would be daunted by them stopping me on one run. This drive has gone pretty well. I could come right back at them. Under pressure, and he will go down. Sacked back at the 38. The D tackle, Sheldon Richardson, came barreling in for the sack. You never want to give up a sack. From the O-line's perspective, they hate it for several reasons, especially because they felt like they let little brother down back there in the pocket. Oh, no doubt. They have a ton of pride, and they go into every job wanting to keep that guy clean. They want that uniform with no grass stains, no dirt, nothing on it, but it's really, really difficult. You're talking about some terrific athletes who are trying to put him on the ground. Now, after that sack, it's third and long for Jackson and the Ravens. Jackson from the shotgun. And he's got his man in stride, complete. And he's going to get this to the 31, but that is still well short of what he needed. They get seven there, but it brings up fourth. We remind you that coming up at halftime, we'll pay a visit to Jonathan Coachman. He's in Orlando, and he'll have our EA Sports halftime report. And this one is right down the middle. And they are on the board, but still trailing. It's seven to three. So in the end, they had the ball for 10 plays, but the drive gets them three, not six. Is it okay if I give credit to both sides on this one? Absolutely. All right, let's start defensively. They hung in there. 10-play drive, but they stiffened when they got close to the goal line. Made them kick a field goal for the offense. 10-play drive. They might be a little disappointed they got a field goal, but they moved the ball down the field with dispatch and came away with points. The Oklahoma product, Baker Mayfield, trotting out there now with the rest of this Browns offense. And I think Baker Mayfield has had a tremendous offseason and getting ready for this one because he put the focus squarely on football and cut out a lot of the peripheral stuff. Just focused in on being the best quarterback and leader for his Cleveland Browns team. And now all he has to do, take care of the turnover issues of last year. 21 interceptions he threw. Now Mayfield lost the football. Able to fall on it, but look where they recovered it. That's a big loss. A lot of bad news on that play for them, wasn't there? Lost the football, lost a lot of yardage, but I think the good news outweighs it. Able to retain possession. That was big for them. Oh, he'll let one go deep for Higgins. And it's knocked away and incomplete. The intended receiver was Rashard Higgins. Third down here. Working out of the gun, Mayfield eluding the pressure right. On the run, he'll let it go deep, right sideline. And the throw there gonna be incomplete. Two things you can do in that situation, run and punt the football or try and take your shot at getting the first down. They chose the latter, but they'll have to punt all the same. And here's Gillen on now to punt as he gets this one away. 37 yards on the punt with no return. And the Ravens, they'll take over. 
The Raven offense set at the line for this next drive. And after the field goal last time, we'll see what they can get here. At least they got points out of the last drive, Charles. I never met an offensive coach that didn't want to drive to end with a kick. <laughs> Most of them want to end with a PAT, right? In this case, a field goal, they'll take it way better than the alternative, which is a punt. Yeah, but you met fan bases that wanted that, that weren't happy with that field goal. <laughs> I haven't met a fan base yet that wants to drive to end with a kick <laughs> other than the extra point. That's it. That's going to be caught at the 10-yard line. The Ravens going to use the second of their timeouts as they get the stoppage with just under 50 seconds remaining in half number one. Ball at the six here as they work with a second and two. To throw is Jackson. And it's caught. And he is into the end zone for a Baltimore touchdown. From six yards away. And the Ravens have taken the lead. That could be an important swing right there, a touchdown in the final minute of the half to take the lead. And I like the point you just made there. Could be an important swing because now that they have the lead, if they can carry that into the locker room at the half, they'll feel really good about what they accomplished in the first two quarters. Fielded a couple yards into the end zone. And he's able to get this across the 20, but not by much as he's marked down officially at the 21. The Cleveland offense ready to go. You're down three under a minute to go. How aggressive are you going to be in this spot? Not as aggressive as I probably would want to be. Only down three. I mean, it might as well be even going into the half. That's not a deficit that makes me want to push it and potentially make a mistake in this situation and cost myself even more points. But boy, getting into field goal range and tying it, that's tempting. Awfully enticing. You almost talked me into it. All that gets him is just a yard, and now it's third down. He's going to look deep now for Landry. And this is, oh my goodness, he pulled it in one-handed. Now the Browns will use the first of their three timeouts. as they'll stop the clock with 12 seconds to go in this first half. So that changes things in a big way. Now from all the way down inside the 30, here's first and 10. Flush to his right, going for it all. And oh, it'll be intercepted. Picked off by the Pro Bowler, Marcus Peters. So time perhaps for one final kneel down before they take this lead to the locker room. All that remains is to snap this once, and that'll do it for the first half of play. And now a timeout defensively after that first down play. So they're going to make this offense sweat out half number one. So we have reached... You want the third quarter already? No problem. Let's do it. The Browns going to see the football first, but they trail here as we resume play on EA Sports. Taken about seven yards deep. And beyond the 20, but not by much. In fact, just a yard pass there to the 21. The Browns drive about to get started. And the interception last time on the opponent's side of the field, certainly not what they wanted. Put it mildly, that is so frustrating because that signifies there's a drive going on. You're in good spot. Great place to run some of your best offense. Instead, they turn the ball over. Yeah, turn the ball over last time. See if they can avoid doing it here. Well, defensively, they haven't let him just sit in the pocket and get comfortable, and that's opposite a lot of game plans in today's NFL. Ordinarily, you're trying to keep the quarterback hemmed in. In this case, they brought the heat, and if he flushes out, they're fine with that, and they force another incompletion. He was held without a catch in the first half, but he's got one here, and he also picks up a first down. And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. 
Consecutive catches for him. That good for 11. And that one complete once again to Higgins. And he'll go down, but not before getting this inside the 30. That'll wind up a gain of 27 on the catch and run. I love the drive they're working on here because they know they can take the lead with a touchdown. And so far on this drive, so good. They moved the ball down the field with very little resistance defensively. But they better be prepared for some adjustments to come their way now. A first down throw for Mayfield. And almost intercepted. It would have been his second pick of the game. Instead, it'll be second down. I like the thought process there. They connected on a big play, and sometimes you find the defense vulnerable. So they went for the bigger shot, went for it all on that one. This time, they were ready for it. Throwing again, Mayfield on second and 10. He'll get this to Chubb out of the backfield. Four yards the gain, and it'll bring up a third down. That might feel like a little bit of a lost opportunity there for the offense because the defense brought pressure that time. And sometimes against that, you can get it out to your running back, and it could turn into a big gain downfield. But what a nice job they did getting to him quickly and holding him to a short gain. Fine work by the Baltimore defense to help bring up fourth down. We've seen these defenses make enough opportunistic plays to keep this one low scoring. Flying around, making plays on the ball, and we see yet another errant throw as a result. Now Cody Parkey out to try the field goal. From the right hash, it's a 38-yard attempt. And Parkey's kick is good. And that will knot us up at 10. So they come away from this opening drive of the third quarter with only three, but it does draw them even. Yeah, and that has to be job one, doesn't it? A touchdown definitely would have been nice. We know that. But here, you get back on even terms, and now you've got most of the second half to try and get yourself into a position to win. And the decision to come out of the end zone is going to cost him five yards as he's taken down right at the 20. The Raven offense set at the line for this next drive. Their defense has done the job. Now it's the offense's turn as they've got it first and 10. The drive will commence with a run by J.K. Dobbins. And they'll get him down after a pickup of eight, second and two. Line of scrimmage, the 28 now as they come up on second and a couple. Stepping up, he'll try and run. And he'll only get a yard to bring up third and one. Anytime you decide to use your quarterback as a runner, most of the time when you design a play, you're expected to break a little bit bigger than this one because when you run him on short gains, your risk-reward and him taking hits, I'm not sure that's the payoff they were looking for. On third down, here's Dobbins. And he's going to have the first down yardage as he's down at about the 30-yard line. It'll be a pickup of only a yard, and it'll move the chains. Now a carry for Dobbins. Oh, he's got a little daylight. And now nothing but green ahead of him. Pass the 20, and all the way in for a Ravens touchdown. J.K. Dobbins, 70 yards, and the Ravens have broken the tie. So there, Charles, I mean, a situation where it didn't matter how far he had to run, he was not going to be denied, and he winds up taking this all the way to the end zone. And how about the situation that we're in right now? Because this is the fourth quarter. So you know there's some tired legs out there on defense and probably some tired minds as well trying to chase guys around for four quarters. But this is where conditioning, athleticism, that separates the good backs from the great backs, and that was an A-plus effort right there. And he covered a lot of ground on that one, as evidenced by the final total there on next-gen stats. Now Mayfield and the Browns, trailing 17-10, 2.18 on the clock, flushed out right. Now he's going to send this one deep right side, and that is incomplete. Took a shot there on first down, but he couldn't reel it in. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and 10. From the gun, Mayfield. He's got a first down past the 30. And he will be taken down, but a big play there as it comes just as we reach the two-minute warning. 
A big play that time for Cleveland. 42 yards. I don't think there's anyone who could possibly doubt how fast he could run in the open field, but if there were, he silenced those thoughts there. And I'll tell you what, what a bird's eye view I've got here because that was absolutely something else to watch. Not a lot of wiggle in that. That was catch it and go, and he used those wheels of his to absolute devastating effect. First down, Mayfield. Escaping the pressure right. This pass complete to Higgins. And they move this all the way down to the nine. It'll go as an impressive 31-yard gain. Well, I guess at the very least, they got the tackle from keeping him out of the end zone. Yeah, you're looking for that silver lining, aren't you? But guess what? Everything changes now after that big play. They've got a chance to strike. And here he'll get it down to the seven. That catch good for only a couple. The line of scrimmage, the seven now on second and goal. Mayfield to throw. And that one got tipped, kind of threw everything off. It brings up third. Certainly appeared to take away his first read, and by the time he tried to look elsewhere and find an open target, the coverage was too good. That one falls incomplete. Now Mayfield on third and goal. And oh, a crusher there as it's intercepted. It's the rookie linebacker, Patrick Queen. And he's into the clear. 30, 10, and he will bring this back. It's a pick six and a Raven touchdown. Little bit of a backbreaker right there. You're down close, one score game, trying to push the ball down the field and score, and you throw a pick six. And sometimes you take a little bit of a gamble when you're making your throws, right? Sometimes you press it a little bit more than maybe you wanted to because you want that score so badly. In this case, it cost them. Take it in the end zone. And he's probably realizing he should have stayed in the end zone as he can only muster a return to the 14-yard line. In this position, trying to get back into the game, teams are looking for a spark from their special teams. That's not what they got, though. They got a setback, and they have a long field to cover if they want to try and put points on the board. And the Raven pressure too much. Down he goes. Calais Campbell finding his way home for the sack. Brandon, that's just football 101. If you're out of the pocket, you've got to get rid of the football in this situation. You cannot take a sack in a two-minute drill. Another try after the first down sack. Mayfield, now a desperation throw deep downfield. And that's going to wind up incomplete. However, we do have a flag down. Let's check in with our referee. Well, when you're leading in the fourth quarter, that's not the penalty you want. Not at all, and now your discipline comes into question. Having poise this stage of the game, you can't have those kind of plays. Eluding the pressure right. He's going to let it fly, and that'll be incomplete. We do have a penalty flag down, however. Let's see what that's about. No! Of course, the game can't end with a defensive penalty, so they'll get one more crack. So now you get an untimed play, which should be the last one, unless it happens again and there's another defensive penalty. Now a desperation throw deep downfield, and that will be incomplete as time has run out on this football game. So the final seconds tick away in this Baltimore victory. And they were spurred on by a strong performance in that fourth quarter as they held their opponents off the scoreboard. Everyone wants to pitch a shutout for the entire game, but when you throw one in the fourth quarter, that tells everyone that you're getting stronger and dominance is starting to take over, right? The way that you close, the way that you finish, that gets preached to you from the time you're playing Little League football all the way up through. And they closed them out with a big-time performance down the stretch. So that'll just about do it for Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. For more, log on to easports.com. With that, we say good night.
from Cleveland.